So the next method, what I'm going to do here is, uh, I want to find out the factorial number for the given number. So what is a factorial? Uh, it's just a right? multiplication of, uh, so till that number, n, n minus one, n minus two, n minus one, and till the one, you have to keep reducing, right? So that's the factorial value. So how to get this factorial value for any input number in you, that factorial value you have to find out. So let me write, so I have to give an input. So that means a parameterized method I have to create. So public, so it, it has to return. That's a return type method I'm giving. Because if I give the input, it should give the output to me. That's why I want to return the output of the logic, entire code, this method code. The I want factorial output. If I give two factorial, so it has to return output to two, right? One, two into one. If I give three factorial, three number if I give, six it has to return to me. So like that, that's the you no know, factor of the value we are going to find out. Get factorial value for the given input in TN. So this is the method. So return fact. So I'm going to declare one fact variable here. So int fact equal to one. Okay. So this is the one I'm going to do. But here, let's understand, I'll write a description about this method, what we are going to do. See, the parameter name is n. So the method is a return type method because it's returning the integer output. So what is the factorial? So n factorial, how you can calculate? This is the formula. So n multiplied by n minus one multiply by n minus two multiply by n minus three so and so on till uh, no one you have to do that and you'll get the output so that output you have to return right so zero factorial value is uh, one. So zero factorial one is one. One factorial one only. Zero factorial one factorial is one only. So you iterate. So then you iterate till the end. So all the numbers you have to iterate. So int i equal to one. And while so i less than or equal to n. So I have to write a logic, fact equal to fact multiplied by i. So then increment the i value by one. So return this fact variable. So this is the one way. So you take n value, for example, you take n value four. So I'm going to write now logic. See that I'm showing the how if you give the input, how you can execute the code in your mind. So program computer will execute, but you run even your mind iteration by iteration so that you will understand the problem. How you are solving, you will understand. So I value one first, one less than or equal to, what is the n value we have taken? So example I'm giving n value I'm taking n equal to four. Let's take the four, okay? So n place, you replace the four. So what is the output? True, comes here. So fact equal to, what is the fact value well, initially one? One multiply by one. So you'll get a one. Factorial value well, one only you'll get. So that statement is done, then this will execute. I equal to I plus one, right? I plus one means one plus one. So you'll get a two. 
So current I value two. Now it will go to condition again, right? So two less than or equal to four. True. Is it true? Comes inside. Fact equal to. So what is the fact value one? So multiply by what is the I value currently two. So what is the total fact value becomes two now. Now I value becomes two plus one, three it will become. So now it will go to condition, while loop condition, I value three less than or equal to n value four. So it is also true. Comes here, fact equal to current fact value two multiply by I value three. So what is the output? Six, you got it. So now here, uh, I think this one is less than four only. Okay, so fine, less than or equal to only. I equal to three plus one, four. So it will go to condition, I value currently four. Four less than four also, but four double equal to four, it will become true. So comes inside, fact equal to, current fact value, what is the current fact value? Six, multiply by, what is the I value? Four. So you will get a 24. So now I value will increment to four plus one, five. Now here, five, less than or i value five now five less than or equal to four false it will exit this entire thing and it will come the fact value 24 will return wherever you are calling this method that's a return type methods means so you will get this final output this output you can use in anywhere you don't need to print. Print is just printing for your console. But this, you don't need to print. You can use this value in another methods. That's a return type method means. One method output, you can use in another methods. You can use in another methods if it is a return type method. If it is not a return type method, you cannot use that method output. Okay? That's why you need any dynamic data, any data you want to get. So you have to create a return type methods. So that is the reason we need a return type methods. Wherever you want to fetch the data, you can fetch the data with the return type methods. There is one more program. How we can write? Same, getting the factorial value another way. So there is one more recursive way. So let's see I'm, how I'm going to write. Public int, get factorial value by recursion. So I'll tell you what is recursion, okay? So int n. So recursion means, I'll tell you, recursion means, what is recursion? Let me write. Recursion means calling the method name itself in the body. That is called recursion. Calling the method name itself in the body. That is called recursion. By recursion also, you can get the factorial value. So how can we get it? So let's see. First I'm writing uh, if n equal to zero, so return one, okay? So then return n multiply by, say I'm calling the method. 
this is called so see, i'm using above formula here we i have written a formula did you remember here this one n into n minus 1 that's what i'm doing n multiply by get factorial value by recursion n minus 1 that's it it will calculate till the one till the value becomes so one so it will keep rotating till the end this is a very simple program you don't need even loop also so this is called a recursion calling the method name itself in the body is called recursion so let's call all this programs okay so did anyone uh, tried yesterday's uh, no the sum of uh, no all the values i think uh, lakshman you tried did you try yeah, i think i tried sum of odd numbers and even numbers right 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 but the difference between sum of odd and even yeah right. exactly right, right. Yeah. so only you are the one did and uh, nobody else tried it that's a problem here you, you have to write the programs right you have to write the programs then only so you will get a confidence where you are and uh, you know you will understand that if you are not writing the programs you never going to get the logics so basically in the interview they will give different different programs not the same but if you know these logics you can try to solve the problems if you are not at all practicing it doesn't work out okay make sure you write the program so what are the task i have given that you need to do so only one person is doing means that's not a good thing right and then three methods except that some of the difference i haven't done okay so remaining thing try to do that okay so that's important but i have given lot of programs right so you have to do that okay okay let's call all these non static methods one by one right these are all non static methods how can we call non static methods in the same class you have to create object for this class so let's create object for the class which i am not doing no hearing anything from you any exercise this is the danger bells sir this is a bigger danger bells for the subject you are not going to learn if you are not doing the work on the day to day i told you from the beginning but uh, so you are keep on postponing that's a danger bell sir so please you know work on that okay class name object reference equal to new class name so class name is while demo wd will be equal to new class name because once a sub subject is keep moving and you are not uh, you know doing every day what will happen is you won't get uh, now which one you need to read you will confuse then you will give up automatically that's where the problem will come so every day you have to read every day you need practice then you will get some you no know, idea on the topics okay so while demo let's call this methods one by one wd o b z sorry so print 1 200 five days bill numbers wd o b z dot print even numbers so wd o b z dot print our numbers 52 1 wd o b z dot 
print a to z alphabets print as the codes Every object reference only can do that. I'm calling the return type method. These are all wide methods. These are all wide methods. Now I'm calling return type methods. Calling return type methods. The formula. Formula you follow that. So make wherever a situation comes, you write the formulas. So that it will be very benefit for you. Very, very helpful for you. So data type. So variable name equal to object reference dot return type non-static method. So data type. So see that I'm calling this uh, this method some get some of your natural numbers. That's the return type is the integer. So put integer. So some val equal to variable name. Anything you can give. This is anything you can give. Then so equal to I have already. As per this formula, I'm going. Then object reference is WD OBJ. That method name is get some method. And this is a parameterized method, so I have to do the parameter. So the first 100 numbers are sum. So I can print. So this method is giving output. So that output I stored here. So 100 numbers sum is. Hundred numbers, sum is. So you print that in the sum value it is there. Okay. So let's execute this. All these methods. So we'll call other methods slowly after this execution. See. Only five digits are printing. So this space is coming where? The slash t is in the space. And then print uh, only your numbers, see that. Print only our numbers 50 to one, see 50 to one it is printing. See this is the one. And A to Z capital letters are printed. The next line uh, is ASCII codes. Capital A ASCII code is 65. Capital B ASCII code is 66. Capital C ASCII code is 67. So like this, if you see capital Z ASCII code is 90. So 90. Capital Z ASCII code is 90. Okay. And uh, so 100 number sum is 5050. So this is the how you can execute the code. If you change the data, if you change here, for example, 150 figure, so 150 number sum will change. See, the input you are changing, but not logic. Logic is same, but the input data you can change. That's the parameterized method advantage. See what is the output? 11,325. So 1 to 150 numbers sum. You are summing up all of them and giving the output. Now another return type method. Call the another return type method. Int factorial value equal to so wdvz dot get factorial value so the factorial value i can give for example five factorial i want 
by factorial value is one twenty. See, you, you count it manually also, you will get the same result. So this is the output, right? This output is giving for you. Who is giving? The method is giving output. That's a written type method. So I got into this variable and this I'm using here. Even I can use that in the other place also if I want. For example, this I want to use in another method. I can use it here. For example, I want to use this in this. So in this method, I can use that. I can use this value here. What are the values? See, I can use here. I can remove and I can put here. So see how you see the value this method is giving output, I stored in a variable. This variable value I can use for another methods. Another method I am using as an input. You can use any input, you can use one method output, you can use in another method input. See, this is the this method output is stored here. And that output I'm using as an input to, to the other methods. That's what the method, return type method means. So there's a return type method's advantage is that is the main thing. See? Five factor 120, but 120 numbers are some is 726. So this is the advantage of return type methods. They return a value. They are going to return the value to you. So you have to utilize that wherever you want, another places if you want, you can use that, right? So that's a return type methods means. Next. I want to call return type method in the print statement. So I will call six factorial value is by recursion. By recursion. Six factorial value by recursion. Right? So call the method WDU. How oh, you can call the non static method? Get factorial value by recursion. So you have the value 6. Integer number we are providing. So you will get output. See, 720 is the 6 factorial value. You count it 6 multiplied by 5 multiplied by uh, 4 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 1. That's the output. You will get the same as output you will get. Right? That's a 6 factorial means. How you will write 6 factorial? So this is how you will write 6 factorial. 6 factorial means 6 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 3 times 2 times 1. So you will get a 720. See that? So 6, 5 is a 30, right? 34 is a 120. 124 is a, right? 120. And you can do, you know, 120, this, uh, yeah, 120, 120 by 6. So 120 multiplied by 6, you will get a so 720. 
This how is the same output written by your method. This method is returning sound code, 120. So this is the, all the return type methods purpose. See, these, these are not returning because these are void methods. They're not returning values. So those are the so multiplication table is there, right? One more method. So let me call the multiplication method also. That's a parameterized method. So WDOBZ dot print multiplication table. So which table you want? Give the table number. For example, I want nine table. I can print any table. You give any table that will print for you one to 20. Set. See? Is this correct or not? This is the output you are getting. Your method is doing that. I'm not hard coding for nine. I can change now. So I can change, for example, I will give, so 19 table. See, 19 table will print for you. So 19 table will print for you. See, this is what? Exact output. This is how we need to write the programs. So the logics. So understand how the frame and how the logic has to write. So by practicing only you will get this, okay? Next program, that's all while loop. So let's move on now, do while programs. Let's finish this today, do while programs. Next week we'll see for loop and other things. So do while. Let me make a short video.